Heading right for the eye of the storm is NOAA's reconnaissance plane, now within 100 miles of its target. Its mission, pinpoint the exact center to help forecasters determine if it's moving straight ahead toward Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula or beginning to turn north toward Galveston or New Orleans. Probes and sensors mounted on the outside of the plane will record air pressure, humidity, temperature, and wind speeds, while radar shows wind and rain patterns. This information will be critical to predicting the height of the storm surge and assessing potential wind damage when Gilbert finally hits land. To get the most complete information, the plane normally flies into the storm at 5,000 feet above the sea surface, where the winds can be fierce. Yeah, the only hard convection is right in the eye wall. Yeah, that's just we're, like we're, Alan was, we're looking it? awful high that far away. That's yeah, that's true. Yeah. But it looks a lot like Alan on the 8th. Yeah. Which makes sense. And it was a piece of cake in 5. But Hugh Willoughby, yeah. lead scientist, and flight meteorologist yeah. Jeff Masters are concerned that today it might just be too dangerous. Should they chance 5,000 feet to get the best data or climb up to 10 for safety? I don't know. If we're, if we're all strapped in and we're ready for it, don't have any altitude excursions, which yeah. I don't think we will. If we go at 5,000 feet, we should miss that heavy cell there. Yeah, it might be big enough to orbit if we had to. We could climb to 10,000 feet orbiting in the eye if we did get a bad pass at 5,000. But like I say, Alan was just like that. We spent yeah. the whole day at five with one good bump. It should be a, a pussycat. <laughs> Looks like the worst convection is on the northwest or the north side of the eye wall. No it plane has like gone down in an Atlantic hurricane since 1955, but enough close calls have taught the crew to be cautious. Sometimes it's not always pleasant, but, I, but it's always interesting, almost always interesting. Nelson and I, the first storm we flew together, Edith in a DC-6, and we, it just knocked us on our, on our uh, cans. It just upset us wildly, and we weren't at all sure what hit us. The airplane was physically upset. We hit some kind of extraordinary turbulence that just threw us temporarily out of control. And I wasn't sure for, it seemed like an eternity. I wasn't sure just which way was up and balanced flight. And Nelson and I thought maybe this, maybe we were making a mistake in this whole thing. Maybe we were, but here we are. David? Yes, sir. Okay, we're gonna go in at 10,000 feet. At 10, huh? Yeah, we're uh, playing it safe. Looks impressive anyway. We have about 15 miles to the beginning of the wall here. So uh, track 180. Well, the eye is, is very small, almost too small to maneuver an airplane in. We can go straight across it, but we don't want to turn a lot inside the eye. It's only eight miles across, and all around it are very intense uh, uh, thunderstorm updrafts. Uh, uh, it's, you don't see many like this. Moments from entering the eye wall, the pilot makes important last minute corrections in order to hit the center of the storm. Yeah, this will be our 18Z fix, so we want to steer until we find zero winds. So let's set condition one. Yeah, we've got 100 knots of wind now. Yeah, I thought it might drop off, but it hasn't. Not yet. If it hasn't by now, it probably won't. <laughs> no. We may see some uh, 200 knot gusts here. 25 knot updraft. Now in the eye wall, turbulence begins to rock the plane. Here are the hurricane's heaviest rains and strongest winds. Let's keep tracking those winds. We're just coming into the edge now. The eye is as clear and as small as any this crew has seen. 
It is a narrow cylinder 12 miles high and perfectly clear all the way down to the sea. Okay, uh, do a right bank uh, uh, 20 degree roll angle. Let's hold it for about 10 seconds here. The crew looks down on a raging sea and waves 50 feet high. Jeez, look at that water up there. By looking at the direction in which the wind is driving the waves, the crew searches for a point where the water is still, marking the exact center of the hurricane. Do you guys see a, a center down below there? I think we're just about directly over. No, okay, I'll mark it. Looks good, looks good. I think we got the center. As the plane passes through the center, its instruments record air pressure readings lower than ever before measured from an aircraft in the Atlantic. Hey, we had uh, just set a new record for an aircraft surface pressure. 894 millibars. These are extremely rare conditions. This is the sort of thing that you'd see in the 1935 Labor Day storm or in Hurricane Camille. You get destruction like, uh, like a tornado over a swath uh, 40 miles wide, perhaps. Very, very unusual over the tropical oceans. On the south side, highest winds are 129 knots. On the north side, 167 knots. Even as the airplane heads out the other side of the eye, wind and air pressure data arrive via satellite at the National Hurricane Center. The only hurricanes that were of this class, we use a scale of one to five, and this is a five. The only hurricanes of this class were Hurricane Camille in 1969, Hurricane Allen in 1980, while it was over the water, not at the time it made landfall, and the 1935 hurricane that went into the Florida Keys. The forecasters here pore over the numbers, fascinated by this astonishing display of nature's power. About 40, it looks like. 40 miles wide. Outside of that, you've got 80 knots, maybe 100 miles per hour. That's the same kind of winds that are in, in the average tornado. But they are also concerned that these figures, based on measurements taken at 10,000 feet, may not accurately reflect conditions at the sea surface. As the plane heads back for another penetration into the eye, the sense among crew members is that the storm is so strong, the readings have to be right. Uh, they're questioning our pressure because we are extrapolating a surface pressure from 10,000 feet, from two miles high. So we're getting messages back. The Hurricane Center cannot believe that we are getting such a strong pressure in the eye, but we believe it. Over the course of the day, the eye shrinks by over a mile in diameter, evidence of further intensification. It's really smaller, if anything, doesn't it? Yeah, I think it's down to six or seven miles across. That's pretty small. As the eye shrinks, the air pressure continues to drop. And the lower the pressure, the stronger the storm. Anything spectacular on the pressure that time? The lowest I saw was 882. Later on, readings in this range were confirmed by another NOAA plane and accepted as the all-time record low for the Atlantic. Hurricanes don't stay like this very long. Uh, there are already indications that this storm, whether it hits the Yucatan Peninsula or not, will weaken in the next day or day and a half. Uh, what's happening is there's a ring of slightly stronger winds forming around the eye that we see on radar. And over the next day or so, this ring will, will contract and probably strangle the eye that we see now. Pressure may go down for the rest of this flight, or it may actually start up while we're here. But uh, tonight or early tomorrow, the center will become much less organized, very probably.